Welcome to Slash Bash, where I am bringing you another Entitled People Reddit video. My mother-in-law insists on breaking my one rule on Christmas. The title says it all. My mother-in-law is very entitled. She visits and plops herself on the couch and expects us to wait on her hand and foot. The couch may as well be her throne. I had told my wife I had one rule for her visit. No news. I can't stand having the news on. It's nothing but things crafted to get you angry or afraid. My mother-in-law is informed of this multiple times. She insists she can't live without knowing what is going on. It's Christmas. Who cares? It can wait 24 hours. As soon as we go to put my daughter to bed, I hear the news on. Okay, cue petty revenge. My TV is controlled by Google Home. My phone is tied into the system so acts as a home unit. I tell it to turn off the TV. She puts the TV back on. I turn it off, she turns it back on. I then go into the Fios app and block news channels. She does something I didn't realize that could be done and had Google turn on CNN on YouTube. She doesn't know the difference though between the TV and the YouTube feed, so cue petty revenge. I use the app to pause the playback. My wife is now trying to laugh quietly. She waits a few minutes, has Google started again, and I immediately pause the playback, so she again has a frozen screen. She is screaming about how the TV is frozen, so I shout down, it must be the storm we are having and the cable is down. It gave me such a warm, fuzzy feeling. Entitled Karen tried to steal my first class seats. For a little context here, I was traveling with my kiddo from the States to my home country, which takes around eight hours with connections. So I booked first class seats for both of us. However, due to COVID in this airline, ours was the last group to be called to board. When we boarded, it turned out a Karen around 40ish and her kid were in our seats. I politely told her so, but she ignored me. As we were the last to board, I had to call the flight attendant and let her know that because we were soon to take off. She came and Karen just repeated in Spanish, Lo siento, no entiendo, over and over again. I'm sorry, I don't understand in English. And the flight attendant felt frustrated as she explained the situation to her in Spanish, yet it was obvious Spanish wasn't her first language and yet Karen pretended she didn't understand. But here comes the funny part. I am a Spanish speaker, so I grinned and told her in Spanish that she was in our seats and had to move to their seats. She then got red-faced and told me how she is a single mother and how I should respect my elders, all in Spanish of course, and how I should go with my brother, actually my son, to the regular seats because she deserved to have the first class ones. I told her she was not my elder, I'm 27 and she was 40ish, and I don't give a flip about her being a single mother. She could pay for them as I did being a single parent as well. Anyways, Karen had the pleasure to have me as her translator telling her to go back to their seats or they would be escorted out of the plane. In the end, she went back to their seats and told me in English how my kind have ruined the states. I just laughed at them and told her to enjoy their seats. Rank has its privileges. It was the week before Christmas and I was flying home to New Jersey from a business trip in California. When I got to the departure lounge, I ran into an old friend from high school. He was a first lieutenant in the army coming home on leave. He said we should ask the gate agent to switch our seats so we could sit together. I said I can do better than that. I was traveling so much for my job that I had tons of frequent flyer miles. I cashed some in and upgraded both of us to first class. We had just settled into our seats when an Air Force Major and his wife entered the plane and approached my friend. Lieutenant, are you traveling on orders? No sir, I am going home on leave. Is this guy traveling with you? Maybe he thought we were a couple. This was before Don't Ask, Don't Tell. Not really, sir. We're old friends and we just happen to be on the same flight. Did you and your friend get upgrades to first class? Yes, sir, we did. Well, you're in our seats. My friend produced his boarding pass, which showed he was in his assigned seat. 
The Major explained that regardless of the boarding pass, as a senior officer, he and his wife were entitled to the first class seats and we would have to move. That was when the flight attendant came over and asked what the problem was. The Major said that he had asked the gate agent for an upgrade and was told none were available. But now he sees they upgraded a lieutenant and this civilian. As a superior officer, regardless of branch of service, he had priority and was claiming those seats. The flight attendant said, Gentlemen, please stay in your assigned seats. Major, please proceed to your seats and coach. You are blocking other passengers. The Major started arguing about rank and military protocol. He claimed he had the right to order the lieutenant out of his seat. It's never been clear to me how this clown thought he could order me to do anything. The flight attendant asked him again to take his seat and he kept arguing. Finally, she said, If you are so concerned with rank, I will get the pilot. He is a colonel in the Air Force Reserve and I am sure he will be happy to order you to exit the airplane and discuss this with the gate agent. The Major stared at her for a moment then realized she wasn't bluffing. Before moving to his seat, he demanded my friend's name and unit so he could report him. I don't know if he ever did, but my friend never heard another word about it. Entitled woman wants me to sell her a donut. I work nights doing dessert prep at a fancy schmancy deli. Occasionally, we throw fried donuts with crazy toppings on the menu. I like to make test rounds of new flavors for the crew before we launch them. I usually work towards the front of an open concept kitchen and am fully visible from the street. There's a strip of bars and clubs directly across. A few weeks ago, I had just finished some donuts and was arranging them for some Instagram photos. I heard a knock on the window and looked up, assuming I'd see one of my friends who works mortal hours heading home from the bar. Wrong. It was a woman I'd never seen before. Assuming it was one of my co-worker's friends, I gave her a polite wave and went back to my iPhone photography. She hit the window again. More like a bang than a knock. Last summer, I had been at work overnight when someone broke all of our front windows, so this made me jump. The woman was gesturing for me to come over to the door. We still have a takeout window from COVID, so I unlocked it and slid it up about an inch. I'm not a nice person, and I just want to finish my work. Can I help you? I'd like a donut. Sorry, ma'am, we're closed. I just came over here to see if I could get you to leave so I can finish my job and go home. But they're right there! At this point, I proceed to shut the window, carry my tray of donuts further into the kitchen, and proceed with photos. The woman knocks a few times and then leaves after letting out one very high-pitched scream. Less than an hour later, my boss texts me to see if I am at work. The woman had called the police to report that she saw a break-in at the restaurant on her way home from the bar. Because I refused to sell her a donut. This is John from Slash Bash. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed the video and want to be the first to know when the next one drops, then subscribe. I would love for you to drop a like, share it with your friends, and I'll see you in the next one.